Beloved, in the name of Jesus, I greet you once again. Today is Wednesday, and we study the Word of God. It's always a great honor and pleasure to be standing, and above all, to be interacting with you based on the Word of God. I'm not preaching, but I'm just interacting with you based on the Word of God. God is good all the time, and I just want to take this opportunity to invite you as I pray with you, wherever you are. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to thank you. We give all the honor and the glory unto you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Father God, we cannot survive without standing your word, without knowing what to speak when we're in trouble, without knowing how to confront the evil one if we don't know your word all the time when we focus on the Bible study. But I pray your wisdom, pray your insight, and above all, bless each and every one of us as we go through the study of the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. By now, Kalibito Lamrana Jesu, Ratao Leboha, Ubani Mutimulukile, Watsapahala, Rebuha Kalerato. We're talking about love. As I indicated that love is a very, very, very vast subject. But we are going to try and narrow the subject so that together we can understand the basics of what is it that is expected of us as children of God. Remember what I said last week when I defined love from the Greek perspectives, from the Greek Bible. English Bible talks about love and the dictionary that defines love, it's only love in English and nothing else. But in Greek, we've got storge, as I indicated. We've got phileo and we've got eros and we've got agape. Last week I unpacked them all. But today, allow me just to begin by reading Matthew chapter 22. From verse 37 to 40, love the greatest command. I'm not going to embark a lot on Matthew 22. I would unpack it as we move on. But as our starter, I think it's very important to understand where does this theme come from? Matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 reads, when Jesus was asked, Teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? He replied as follows. You shall love the Lord your God with all, underline this all, with all your heart, no reservations, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest command. What is the first and great command? Loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, all inclusive. Don't think of any other thing. Love him wholeheartedly. And the Bible says this is the first and greatest command. The second is like it. And what is the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And which are these two commandments? Number one, loving God first. Secondly, love your neighbor. Now, today allow me to start with the second command. I just want to focus on loving your neighbor. We are going to talk a lot about the first, but today I just want to give some synopsis about loving your neighbor as the second commandment. When you read First John chapter 4 from verse 19 to 21, it reads, We love we people, 
We love because God loved us first. He loved us when we did not deserve his love. He loved us. And John continues to say, whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, it's a liar. If you say you love him, but you hate the one that you live with, the Bible says you're a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And that is John. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So you can see that the first command and the second are intertwined. The first is loving God. The second is loving your brother and sister. And if you don't love your brother and sister, but you claim to love God whom you have not seen, John says, you are a liar. So in other words, by now, this is very, very important. Unless we begin to lie and claim to be loving God, but our lives full of hatred, hating people that you live with. And again, First John chapter 4, Verse 8 reads, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Who says it? I mean, it is very clear, whoever does not love. So if you don't love in your life, you cannot claim to be knowing God. You don't know him in any way. Now today, just in brief, what does the Bible say about storage? Storage, you remember, is one of the Greek loves that I have unpacked yes, last, last week. What does the Bible say about storage or familiar love? Remember, storage is described from the Greek translation as the bond of empathy. Bond of empathy. Through fondness, family ties, and familiarity, it is a natural love because it is formed between people. So in other words, it's a natural because we are born with nature. Even all religions have got the same belief that we are born good. How much more when you love God? Because it is automatic because empathy, it's something that is inborn. When you see someone not well, when you see someone suffering, that empathy stands out in you and you begin to make a difference in other people's life. But let me just continue with familiar love. The family is the core institution that God established for people. So a family is established by God and it is called. So through familiar love, children grow up into a healthy individuals. You know, if you give your children love, they become healthy because they grow up in that love environment. Without family love, there exist years of hurt and leaves lasting scars. The children who are brought up in a family where there is no love, these children are ever angry, they're hetty, and these scars in them, they last longer. Why? Because they don't get this family love. Within the family, loves begin with husband and wife, and this love between husband and wife then it is passes through the children. So the children get it from the parents. So when we love each other as parents, we are able to give our children the same love. And that is why the Bible, in one of the Ten Commandments, 
It says, honor your father and your mother so that your days on earth can be prolonged. And that we find in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. And respect is one of the ways people show love. You show love by respect. And the Bible says Job prayed for his children every day. He blessed his own children. And that is what God expects of us. The command to love your neighbor is ever present in both testament. Both is clarified, both in both testament, the old and the new. It is clarified by Jesus, especially in the New Testament. When Jesus was confronted with people and they asked him, share with us, who is my neighbor? Who should be considered as our neighbor? And remember how Jesus responded to them. He gave them a story of a good Samaritan. In actual fact, the story of the good Samaritan, it is showing everyone and anyone should be considered a neighbor. Because a Samaritan was not a Jew. But that is the man who actually took the man who was beaten almost at the brink of death and supported. And he demonstrated the the Samaritan demonstrated empathy upon this particular person so that at the end of the day, things might go well with this. Then when you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, it says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Where there is no love, there is destruction. And again, when you read James chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin. If you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. So the Bible is very clear about not loving your neighbor because your neighbor is the person you live with. Your neighbor is everyone that you live with. And in the Old Testament, there's a conclude. Chapter 10, Deuteronomy 10, 10, 19. It says, and you are to love those who are foreigners. For you yourself were foreigners. So brethren, there is no excuse of not loving your neighbor. May God bless you. And this is the second command. But we'll continue. But for today, let us just stop here. And go out there and practice. So that. The love that God has loved you with can be shown and be known by others who live together with you. Almighty God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you that every day you make yourself known to us. Even today, after we have heard your word, continue to master our lives for your kingdom's sake. Amen. God bless you and God loves you. Take care. Amen.